it's good to have you again. Last time, I think the, the, the second time we've ever spoken, the second space he joined, we were talking about the US Twitter files. And then yeah. here we are about a year later with Brazilian Twitter files. Have you had a chance to go through the drop yet? Well, it's voluminous. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out how to do how to <laughs> It's a treacherous path here. We're trying to do this in such a way that does not endanger the, you know, the, the ex-employees in Brazil because they have been threat, threatened with arrest. So, you know, it's, we, we don't want to put them in danger. So we're trying to figure out a, a way to just make sure they're safe uh, before we do anything. But I, I think there are some pretty serious concerns here because, you know, really the people that were elected, the Senate and, uh, you know, parliament sh really should have a lot more authority than, than they do. Like the, the, this, the, things don't work the way in, in, in Brazil, they don't work the way they, they work in, in, in say the U S um, our, our concern, you know, at, at uh, X is that like, we're being asked to do things that are illegal by the judiciary, which seems very like bizarre. So, you know, that's somewhat of a quandary being asked to do things that directly violate the law by a judge it seems odd. You've had, would you have Senator Eduardo on stage? Would you have Representative Nicolas on stage as well? And Deputy Luis? And there's been many other vocal voices in Brazil that are, that are supporting your fight against the censorship you have there. So just to be clear on the line drawn, I know you made a tweet clarifying this. Essentially what differentiates Brazil from other forms of censorship you face is there, and, and how you determine when to fight you know, a government or, or any, any uh, three-letter agency when it comes to censorship is when their request breaks the law. And this is a difference, the clear Correct. difference that you have in Brazil. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're being asked to suspend accounts and, and, and filter content that, and also to not say anything about it. So to pretend that the, the suspension and the content um, of blocking, like regional blocking uh, is due to our root term, our terms of service, when in fact it is not, it is an order from, you know, Alexander, Judge Alexander. Nicholas, you do have, you've been very vocal in supporting uh, Elon's fight against censorship. Uh, you've got Elon on stage now. I want to give you the mic first, Nicholas, Representative uh, Ferreira, to ask Elon any questions and kind of give your thoughts on, on Elon's fight against censorship. Okay. Thanks. First of all, I'd like to thank Elon Musk for the opportunity to fight for my country, for his courage. Thank you so much. You don't even know how much it means for, for us. And I believe that everyone wants to hear you. And I would like to ask you a question. How do Twitter files came, came out? Because there's a confusion among people that Twitter files only appear because of Alexandre de Moraes, which is not true. It starts after the presidential election in the Biden government when you leak the files of Twitter. Can you, you explain yeah. that for us, please? I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but the, I mean, there, 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 there has been a lot of government intervention in, in Twitter and basically government spying and, and censorship in the U S and, and elsewhere. And nobody even knew about it when we acquired the company, I'm like, okay, we're just going to just. So we were talking about the censorship in Brazil and how Alexandria and the Supreme Court and the judiciary are basically using their power to stifle all forms of dissent. Um, there were a number of panelists who were asking Elon Musk any questions. He mentioned some points. He mentioned that his main concern was to ensure that his employees, his ex-employees, so we had a number of follow-up questions on that. He also mentioned how the, he mentioned basically about Alexandria and why the difference in this situation was that in Brazil, compared to other countries who asked for censorship, Brazil was specifically breaking the law themselves. And then the last question that he was talking about and he was answering was about the Twitter files and the reasoning for the release of those files. So that's what we got to. And then the space crashed. So hopefully he does jump back back in, and then we'll be just able sent to him ask just, him just yeah, just sent him an invite here, and and I want to get so so the thing I'm focusing on obviously Sulaiman and Nick, uh, we'll be giving you the mic as well. But I think it's you know me Sulaiman and Nick, and uh, try facilitated the space, but obviously the people really fighting this battle uh, are on stage with us, Alan, Senator Eduardo, uh, Representative Nicolas. We've got others that will be coming up shortly. They'll be coming up again shortly. 
as we try to get Elon again. But Nick, go ahead while I get the panel organized and maybe getting your thoughts on Elon's initial comments. I think that the one, the most striking one is the one that he mentioned sort of is the fact that he's worried about dropping the files. And that's something at least you kind of shows as concerning censorship is in the U.S. and centralization power is, is becoming in the U.S. as we covered it in the previous Twitter files. The difference is Brazil takes it to a whole new level uh, where the safety of the journalists is a concern before you know, and Elon and his team have to consider that. So there are a Twitter files drop already that we're talking about. That drop was by, a, I think it's a Brazilian journalist, Alan, who did that initial Twitter files drop that we're calling it Twitter files and that we're talking about, Alan. Yeah. Okay, is Alan's Before I answer, point? can I, can I suggest, can I suggest Paulo Figueiredo join us because he's a great fighter journalist, uh, that he helped in is he, fighting is he for re- freedom. Is yeah. Is he requesting think. right now? Can you see him? Uh, Paulo, there it is. Paulo is requesting. Yeah, yeah. Provider. Yeah, I'm just following. So basically the, the story came, came up today for me was wasn't a surprise the fact but the documentary of it you know the document sorry it it is kind of weird to see some influencers working with the the supreme court and the twitter employees trying to silence the the opposition so that story is kind of well known for us in brazil the censorship is being strong and when we see document of it and seeing that our government is working together with the Supreme Court, trying to force companies to do and, things against freedom of and speech. And 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 yeah, I want to jump ahead. because you're one of the, the, the people that are the, that are the you know, most prominent victims of that level of censorship. And Elon, we were talking about it earlier. Thanks for joining again, Elon. It's been a good for you to, to jump in for the first time. But the, the, the thing, Alan, we were, you know, we were talking about earlier is not only censorship of journalists, but it's, it's, you know, they're taking it a step further where it's becoming a prosecution. And we have the senator and the representative talk about it on stage and I tweeted about it. Um, and that's journalists' bank accounts being frozen. Alan, I'd love you to share that with Elon, get Elon's thoughts on it to kind of show the, the level ahead. of censorship. Alan, no, the mic is yours. Can you tell Elon what level of censorship you journalists are facing in Brazil? Sure, definitely. You know, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to have a account on Twitter, on X right now, because I was facing a very strong fight during three and a half years without seeing my family. My company, Terce Livre, needed to move to United States to keep doing journalism. It's a, a small business that I started for independent journalists, journalism in Brazil, and after the Moraes decision that I have no idea what he's kind of accusing me of, he froze my assets. He ordered my arrest in United States, in Brazil, asked the United States to deportate me or destroy my life. And I couldn't make account on every platform in Brazil. Even I am living in the United States right now by the protection of the United States constitution, thank God. Because he was doing daily fines for every platform that I was creating an account, even OnlyFans, I was banned. So I was banned on from Getter, or from OnlyFans. By the way, I was using OnlyFans for doing journalism. <laughs> and uh, uh, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> and yeah, for your knowledge, for your knowledge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I know. So... The persecution was so strong that I wasn't able, Elon, to feed my family. My daughter is facing recovering from meningitis and cephalite, and I couldn't send money to my family, my daughter, because he froze my assets. And he was doing daily fine against the platform because I was creating accounts. So that was a crime, creating accounts. And because I, I gave you money, Elon, because I bought the, the yellow the yellow badge for my company. And today the press in Brazil was saying that I was being uh, helped by you just because I, I've got the, the yellow badge for my company. So this is how crazy it is. Yeah, it is actually very crazy. I mean, I think there's no question that there's an abuse of judicial power here to an extreme degree. I don't know if I interrupted you because it was glitching for me, but I wanted to get your thoughts on what Alan said and then What's next for that fight on censorship? Sorry for cutting it short, Elon, but I know there's a possibility it could come again. The people of Brazil ought to know that there is uh, an abuse of judicial power in ex- to an extreme degree that we've not seen in any country on earth. 
I have never seen anything of this magnitude. So it's insane. And the, the elected representatives of the people of Brazil, that, that's who should be in charge. You know, and the judiciary is there to, to in, you know, execute upon the law, but not to make the law, but they are making the law. And I think it's a, an outrage. People, people should be extremely upset. So like, this has got to stop. Elon, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and jump in and ask you a question here. I know it's, there've been reports today. I don't know how true they are yet because there's this story has been so rapidly developing that it's, you know, it's hard to get confirmations on everything, but are you in further communication with Brazilian officials at this point? Have they mentioned an all out ban on X anytime soon? And do you foresee that being a real possibility? They have threatened to uh, cut off um, X entirely from Brazil. They've also threatened to arrest our employees. And they have uh, applied a, a $20,000 a day fine. And do you foresee them actually following through with any of that stuff? Because, you know, it seemed in the beginning that this Supreme Court justice was going to rapidly pursue these things. I mean, I don't know just what the, the, the threats that have been made. Uh, I don't know if these threats will come to pass or not. But judging by what has happened to others, I think these, th these are with these threats are real. I, I don't know. I think, I think this is like really judicial authority going, going far beyond judicial authority to, to executive authority. So that, that's, that's, you know, I just think it's just totally, absolutely improper. The law is violating the law. It's crazy. Nicholas wants to speak. Elon, just to let you know, after starting to ask you for more information about your allegations, the Brazilian Supreme Court had just opened uh, investigation against me because I said in my United Nations speech that Lula is a corrupt. It's, it's crazy what's happening here in Brazil. And in the elections, presidential elections here in Brazil, I, I was a victim of what is happening here with the accounts that are being blocked. After the Brazilian elections, my account was banned both on X and Instagram and Facebook. To this day, I do not have access to the, to the process and I do not know why the accounts were banned. That's what's happening here in Brazil. So I know that you can't say your next move, but I would like to know what, what, what are you planning to do with the account that are blocked here in Brazil and if you are willing to unblock them. I guess unless an account has somehow broken the law, actually broken the law, then they should not be blocked. They should not be suspended. I, I don't know what, I, how to make say it more clearly than that. 